In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, let's practice. Repeat after me. I forgive you. I forgive you. In Jesus' name, I forgive you. Now, that wasn't so hard, was it? In reality, it is, isn't it? Confess that it is. Don't lie. Jesus knows the truth. The truth is, you often don't bear one another's burdens. You often don't fulfill the Torah of Christ, the teaching, the instruction of Christ. The love one another of Christ. The love your neighbor as yourself of Christ. In fact, when someone is caught in any trespass, you often do quite the opposite. But not for you. When you are caught in any transgression, excuses galore. When you sin, you want the benefit of the doubt. Plead for another chance. More time. You demand that people stop judging you. Stop labeling you. Stop remembering the bad things you've done. You expect people to drop it for whatever reason you come up with. How dare someone be mad? It's you. They're obviously wrong. You're obviously right. And even if you were wrong just a teensy bit, it's not as bad as they're making it out to be. You hypocrite. You want what Jesus says today to be about how to judge people the right way? So you can judge who's right, you, and who's wrong, them? Or so you can call someone out? And you'll have Jesus on your side. Well, listen to this. With the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. That's what Jesus says to you. But what if this text is about something else? Not judgment like we think about it but the way God does instead. Talk about really fulfilling the instruction of Christ. We all have logs. We all have specks. We all have sins, transgressions, trespasses. How much? Daily and much. Jesus is talking about sins in his parable. And God's word of law can't remove sins. It points them out. It's like a mirror. In fact, none of the other functions, curb and guide, can either. The truth is you fail those around you. You fight. You bicker. You talk back, hold a grudge. And in the process of failing, sinning against those around you, your friends, your family, Frenemies, enemies, you fail, sin against Jesus in the process. And this truth gets us to realize something else Jesus points out. Your sins are a bigger problem than your neighbor's sins. You've got the log. They've got the speck. What Jesus says is actually the opposite of how we actually treat the people in our lives. Behavior won't fix this. Our behavior gets us into this mess. Logs and specks and sins, oh my. So, let's practice. Repeat after me. I forgive you. In Jesus' name, I forgive you. Now that wasn't so hard, was it? In reality, it was hard. Jesus had to die. His blood, sweat, and tears 
not yours, and not your neighbor's either. His holy, precious blood and innocent suffering and death, by his wounds we are healed, forgiven of all our sins. There isn't a single sin, not a big one, not a teeny weeny one, that hasn't been paid for by his blood. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Jesus was condemned. You are innocent. He became our sin so that in him we would become the righteousness of God. He hanged on the cross for every log and speck. All people died for. Your family, your friends, frenemies, enemies. You. Jesus is the payment for your sins and the sins of the whole world. His blood, His mercy, His forgiveness is the precious thing, the holy thing, the pearl. And sure, it's not for those who'd rather keep their sins. Like a dog returns to its vomit, so a sinner returns to his sin. They will devour you for saying, Jesus died for what they do. At the same time, the point of His forgiveness is to deliver it. Your baptismal calling is to say that Jesus died for sins, all sins, each sin, every sin, not just yours, but your neighbor's. Now that's the true spirit of gentleness. Your goal, if such things are permissible, is to not hoard forgiveness until your conditions are met. God's already have been. You restore people, enliven them with the word of Jesus' forgiveness. Only His word of forgiveness removes sins. His law or judgment doesn't. What makes you think your judgment will? Our individual planks keep us from seeing that. Receiving and believing the free forgiveness of Jesus, we then know how to deliver it. Not with, it's okay, or no problem, or don't worry about it, or whatever other empty words we say. But rather, we say the most important words Jesus has baptized you to say. So repeat after me. I forgive you. I forgive you. In Jesus' name, I forgive you. In Jesus' name, I forgive you. And they will really be forgiven. And now, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're forgiven too. In the name of Jesus.